Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake. And what we're going to make, well, it's a first time for me, uh, but it was really a lot of fun and a lot of work. It's a German cookie called Springerly, and I'm probably, uh, you know, mispronouncing it, so I do apologize uh, for that in advance. In fact, it's spelled S P R I N G E R L E. And when I saw uh, these cookies, I, well, I, I wanted to be challenged with it. Uh, as you know, if you've watched my channel and, and uh, my videos uh, close to, I think, 600 now, I like easy and quick recipes. Well, this one isn't, but the results of the cookie, well, if you have the time and the notion to want to do it and the inclination to do it, they're really, uh, they're phenomenal. They come out just beautiful. Uh, and when I researched about the cookie, I guess it goes back to the 1600s, and uh, they just made beautiful wood molds for them that these cookies can look like works of art. Um, I don't have any wood molds, but luckily I came across uh, this wooden um, mold little pin and it, it just makes just the, I think the prettiest cookies that I've, that, I, that I've ever made. Now I went ahead and started the recipe ahead of time because uh, the videos would run probably way too long. So I want to tell you what I've done so far. I took four eggs that were at room temperature and I beat them on high. You're going to need either your stand up or if you don't mind uh, spending the time with your hand mixer. And you'll want to beat the eggs for about uh, four minutes, three to four minutes. And I didn't cheat on that time uh, at all. After that four minutes of beating those four room temperature eggs, you want them very, uh, very thick. And then what you're going to do is you're going to gradually start adding two cups of granulated sugar. And at that time, you'll want to beat it for 15 minutes. So I'm going to just turn my mixer on for a second and then I want to tell you what, what's next. Okay, now after the 15 minutes is up, the egg and sugar mixture will look a lot like that. I, I really wish I could take it out to show you. I, I, can ho I hope you can see how fluffy and how much air is in it. Um, it, it almost looks like, uh, you know, a whip, whipped cream uh, where you just start to, you know, beat whipped cream. Uh, so that was 15 minutes. So that, you know, that takes a bit of time. Well, after you do that, then you're going to be in uh, four to six drops of your anise oil and then just beat that in. Okay, now once you do that, again, I really, I, boy, I hope you can see how nice and thick um, that is, but I, I, don't, I don't think you can get a shot of it. Let me try one more time here. I don't know if you, no, no, I don't think you're gonna be able to see that. Uh, but um, just stay with them that 15 minutes on high and they just fluff up just beautiful. Okay, the next thing that we're going to be putting in slowly is three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. We're going to put a teaspoon of baking powder in that and I do apologize a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and I forgot to put that out, so I apologize for that. A quarter of a teaspoon, there we go. And um, then I'm just going to just, you know, stir that in with my spoon. Okay, and we're gonna slowly start putting the um, dry with the wet. And I wanna warn you about the sound of the mixer ahead of time. Start off slow because you don't want flour all over your kitchen. Okay, now I generally put that in even a little bit uh, slower, but I want to move it for the video. Now I'm going to 
going to turn up my speed a bit. it forms, you know, a, a cookie dough. I'm going to take my paddle out, take off a little bit of my excess here. Okay, and then with my spatula. Now, I generally would beat that longer, you know, stay with it as long as you can. Now, once you do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to put that in a bowl, okay? And again, I would have mixed that, you know, a lot longer. And, uh, but let me get this out at least to show you, okay, what it, it, it looks like, okay? Now, at this point, though, put that in a bowl and then put some plastic wrap on top of it. Uh, and put that in your refrigerator and you're going to have to wait a, again about an hour to do that because it's much easier to work with, uh, with the dough. Now, after that hour is up, what you'll want to do is you'll want to use uh, flour, of course, on your uh, countertop um, or whatever you're using uh, to work on and take the dough out. What I, what I have is, is a little a portion of it left. What you'll want to do is after the hour is up, um, you'll want the thickness about a half an inch, okay? And you'll want it the width of whatever you're using, whether it's your mold or whether it's your pin, my, the wooden pin. This is a little bit smaller because uh, if I show you probably what it will look like at this point without refrigerating. Well, I would probably have put so much flour into it, it just, you know, wouldn't work out. But if you um, just roll it out, like I said, after the hour to the width of whatever you're using, okay? And again, then you'll be able to work with it. It's not as sticky. And then just take your, um, your little pin. I have to roll it like this because it's just easier for my hands than grabbing the ends, okay? And then once you have that, what you're going to do is you're going to take a knife and you're going to follow the lines of the cookie like that. Okay, let me show you the other one. Again, the piece of dough would be the width of this pin. And then you have your half inch molded um, cookies that took the mold of your, of your uh, wood uh, pin here. Now, the next step though is you're gonna need a greased pan and then you're going to place these cookies on a greased pan I put wax paper on top and then a nice clean kitchen towel on top of that. I keep it in a cool place in my kitchen and you'll want that to sit for at least uh, 10 hours or so. In other words, um, you know, over overnight. And um, I, you'll probably think that that was kind of strange. You know, how do you leave out cookies uh, overnight without refrigeration? Uh, but I did read that once you do bake them, if there was any bacteria in it, in the cookie, it would, it would be safely baked out of it. So, uh, but you want them to sit overnight. As I said, I put them in the cool part of my uh, kitchen covered and uh, it was about 10 hours later, uh, then you put them in the oven. Now, after that 10 hours is up and you've got your oven, you'll want to, I'm gonna rinse my hands quickly here. You're going to want to set your oven for um, 375 degrees. 
Now, once it's preheated to 375, then take those cookies that, you know, that you had that were made to about 10 hours before, and then immediately turn your oven down to 300 degrees and bake the cookies for 20 or 25 minutes. Um, you don't want them to get really brown. In fact, I believe that uh, the prettier is if they stay very light in color, almost a white color. And then when they're baked up, they will come out looking like this. And they just make a, a, a beautiful um, uh, cookie. Uh, and they're basically that I would uh, feel, it's like a shortbread. You can see how pretty the bottoms are. Uh, really light in color and then you see the impression of the cookie and then you see they almost look like little pillows in a way uh, a half inch in thickness they actually rise uh, a bit more once they're baked and um, they, they just make for delightful little pretty cookies uh, that when you um, break into them they will have a harder surface on the top and the bottom, but they have, um, well, like a semi-moist inside, like a, like a shortbread, really, where they're not, you know, as hard as a brick or anything like that. But they just make the prettiest cookies, and I'm, I was just so impressed with them. So, for you folks that are out there that make these all the time, uh, I'm sure these aren't going to compare to yours, but I just enjoyed this recipe so much. Uh, it was, it did take work, uh, but I found that very challenging and, and a, a whole lot of fun. And to make such beautiful uh, cookies, whether it's around Christmas time or any, any special occasion, this recipe was well worth it, at least for me. So I want to thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake. All the instructions that I mentioned uh, will be below the video. I hope you try this recipe. If you do and you like it, leave a comment because I'd like to hear from you. Uh, and uh, if you, you know, liked uh, the recipe, give me a like. I'd really appreciate that. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe to my channel. So once again, Thanks for watching Diane Love to Bake, and I'll see you soon.